Hello and welcome to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Hardis, and today we continue our fantasy final series with a look at Ryan Tannehill. Got the voice back, people. Thank you for the few uh, kind comments I got on Twitter. Again, apologies about that quality. Didn't want to break the fantasy file streak. We did not. Now I got my voice back, and we are full steam ahead, like always. And what better person to talk about than Ryan freaking Tannehill, who, if you didn't know this, used to be a wide receiver back in the day. It's not quite, I wouldn't put that quite up there with, you know, Jimmy Graham's played basketball. Logan Thomas used to be a QB. I think most people realize the Tannehill uh, wide receiver story, but it's not quite driven in as much as some other guys. And the part that shocked me looking back on it was not that he played wide receiver. He was actually sick at wide receiver. This dude had 55 catches for 844 yards and five scores as a freshman, 45 catches for 609 scores, four touchdowns as a sophomore. This was not someone that played wide receiver, couldn't cut it and then moved to quarterback. Tannehill was looking like a pretty damn good wide receiver. Obviously, he has maximized his potential and especially his earning power by switching to quarterback. But I mean, we are truly looking at a high level athlete uh, just, you know, like every NFL player is, but Tannehill in particular, you know, when you see him scoring seven rushing touchdowns last year, it makes sense when you kind of consider this, but a and M stuff aside, I think the biggest uh, what's the right word biggest missed uh, misconception. There we go about Tannehill has been his Miami dolphins days. He was so far better than Sam Darnold was with the jets. It's not even close. And I'll, I'll prove it to you. Ryan Tannehill at the dolphins ranked 25th among 77 qualified QBs in PFF pass grade. Darnold was 49th with the jets. Tannehill was 30th in big time throw rate. Darnold was 46th. Tannehill, 41st in term of worthy play rate. There's Darnold 45th. Tannehill, 21st adjusted completion rate. Darnold, 49th. Sam Darnold has objectively been a bad quarterback ever since he joined the Jets. Tannehill was an average to above average quarterback for a good portion of his Dolphins career. I'd say more average, below average maybe for the specific Gase tenure, but it wasn't like we saw him go to Miami and do absolutely nothing. I mean, he had truly one of the best throws we have seen in the past decade. And that is not, you know, a hyperbole on my part. He was facing the chargers and I have it on my Twitter. If you guys want to dig it up in there, it's in my uh, article on Ryan Tannehill, which you can find Ryan Tannehill.com I'm watching with my own two eyes right now. This dude rolls out play action stops right on the midfield logo, right into lightning bolt chargers with a man getting ready to take his head off. Tannehill throws a 60 yard laser into the back the end zone hits i believe kenny stills in stride touchdown absolutely bonkers though that's the sort of arm talent and the athlete we have for ryan Tannehill. so it never really made sense or actually i should say it didn't make sense that Tannehill had a late career breakout because this was someone that was late to play in the position but had all the natural tools in the world and again we saw some upside in miami i mean in 2014 27 touchdowns 12 picks like I know counting stats can be deceiving, but we just never saw Darnold do what Tannehill did. And that's why Tannehill was in Miami for seven years. It's not like, you know, Darnold, Wentz, Haskins, all these guys that, you know, they couldn't even cut it on their first team. Miami liked Tannehill enough to try to keep him on for a couple extra years. It didn't work out. Just realized it wasn't quite as wasted of a tenure as a lot of people have made it out to be. So anyway, comes in to Tennessee. We get about six weeks of the Marcus Mariota experiment. Tannehill comes back in to save the day. And boy, has he ever people. He has been anybody's idea of a top 10 quarterback since he came to Tennessee. And honestly, if we wanted to just say volume be damned and just only looking at his efficiency numbers, we're looking at closer to a top five PFF passing grade among 59 qualified quarterbacks since 2019. Tannehill ranks second big time throw rate. He's tied for 10th turnover worthy play rate tied for 20th yards per attempt first adjusted completion rate tied for 17th quarterback rating second. Again, I get it. Offense is going through Derrick Henry. It's like a three-point shooter shooting five threes a game versus nine. We can't crown the guy shooting five because he has the higher percentage. Volume does mean something. But, you know, it's not awful. 528 dropbacks in 2020, ranked 18th. And the fact he hasn't had like a negative appear, that's the big thing for me because he has been PFF's highest-graded passer when operating out of a clean pocket over the past two seasons and 10th among 63 qualified guys when pressured. Pressured 
clean, throwing deep on the move. Tannehill has been what the kids like to call an elite quarterback and particularly when thrown downfield. And that's, what's so appealing about adding Julio freaking Jones to the equation last year, only Derek Carr and Baker Mayfield had a higher adjusted completion rate on throws 20 plus yards downfield. Again, a little bit of a volume thing. I'm not saying Tannehill is truly a top three deep ball passer in the league. I do think he's top 10 though. And maybe if we really want to get into the itty gritty, he could be in the conversation for top five. So again, the volume, not huge, but he's still done everything we could have asked him to do at the opportunity. And now people, this offense, I mean, my goodness, Julio Jones, to be very clear is anything but washed and, you know, had several shadow realms, which for those that haven't heard me reference is that, you know, a shadow realm is when wide receiver catches the ball. You see the wide receiver cornerback ISO cam replay and the wide receiver dekes the corner so badly that the corner actually winds up off the screen, thus sent to the shadow realm at the catch point. Julio was still doing this last year, guys. He was fourth in yards per out run, sixth in wide receiver rating and 11th overall in PFF receiving grade. Again, He's not washed. He's not the same world beater that was averaging over three yards per out run for half of the freaking uh, previous decade, but he is still anyone's idea of a fantastic receiver and one of the only players that was ranked ahead of him in yards per out run, none other than new teammate, AJ Brown. So for those counting at home, Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson were the other top two, but Julio and AJB, it's, truly the best wide receiver combo in the league. And, you know, I'm sure that one will get thrown up on a quote graphics. Let's quickly look elsewhere and see who would beat it. Bills with all due respect to Diggs and Beasley. No dolphins, not yet. Patriots, Jets, Steelers, Ravens. No Browns. Not these days. Bengals got a nice trio, but can't put them up there just yet. Colts. No Texans. No Jaguars. No chiefs. Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey have an argument. If you want to just call Travis Kelsey, your number one receiver, he is regardless of a positional designation Raiders. No chargers. No Broncos. No love my guys. McLaurin and Samuel would not go there. Same thing. Cowboys are with there with the Bengals. Just a little bit too young. I think at this point, giants, Eagles, no Packers, bears, no Vikings, Steeling and Jefferson are up there. I think they I might have a conversation for third, but I wouldn't put them ahead of Julio and AJB lions, saints, Buccaneers, Goblin and Evans. That's a very good one. Panthers, Falcons, Seahawks, Lockett and Metcalf. Rams, Cardinals, 49ers. So I would say the big five, I go number one, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. Actually, if we're not including both wide receivers, number one, Tyreek and Kelsey, number two, AJB and Julio, number three, Evans and Goblin, number four, hmm. Number four, I'd say Jefferson and Thielen, which leaves us with number five. And I can't quite remember who I identified as the fifth finalist. Either way, we all know that age. Okay. The Seahawks lock it in Metcalf. Number five. There we go. Either way, we can all agree Julio and AJB anyone's idea of a great one, two punch. I love the, the one quote. Uh, my guy, Andrew Erickson uh, had, who will be on the podcast again next week. Apologies. I tried to record with him this week, but my voice, which is starting to fail me again, just wouldn't allow it. So Andrew had a great quote, basically said, AJB and Julio Jones are like Batman and Robin if they were both just Batman. So good uh, point by Andrew there. Basically, the, and I'll you know, wrap up this pod here, here pretty quick. Basically, the one potential issue for Tannehill in this passing game is pressure. Last year, the Titans joined the Steelers, Colts, and Buccaneers as the only four offenses with a double-digit difference in their 2020 pressure rank versus when the quarterback got rid of the ball in fewer than two and a half seconds. I mean, the Titans ranked 17th in overall pressure rate. Like, Tannehill did a good job getting rid of the ball. In under two and a half seconds, they ranked 30th. Like, he needs to get the ball out quickly. Hopefully they fix things. This is PFF 14th ranked offensive line ahead of next season. But one of the points was should excel in the run game once again, but the unit must get better in the pass game if it's get back into the top 10 units. So with that all in mind, PFF Lily Ryan Tannehill's stat is that Ryan Tannehill is PFF's single highest graded regular season quarterback since 2019 at 93.2. I think the difference between that and my previous uh, him being number two stat was I was taking that just from the seven games he was uh when he came in a starting quarterback, not for the previous weeks as a backup, regardless, the guy's been a top two highest grade passer since 2019, which is absolutely wild. Takes me to my rank, Ryan Tannehill, QB 12 going from this year. 
It shouldn't be crazy. He's a QB 11 underdog last two years, QB 10, QB 11 and fantasy points per game. For those of you that have been listening throughout the off season, I said on the Ryan Tannehill pod or not the Ryan Tannehill. This is the Ryan Tannehill pod on the Ryan Fitzpatrick pod. I said, I was so ready to make Fitzpatrick my favorite late round QB, but there was Ryan Tannehill sitting at QB 16. So Tannehill no longer qualifies just like Jalen hurts people. You can't say Tannehill is your favorite late round QB anymore. He is a QB one that he deserves to be. I have my head of Matthew Stafford. Matt Ryan, Baker, Fitz, and the rookies. I would take Tom Brady and Joe Burrow for the additional volume. I don't think Tannehill is going to score seven rushing touchdowns again. Uh, but either way, people, Ryan Tannehill, particularly if you happen to get one of his receivers in the early rounds in best ball, something that's going to make your fantasy football team better again in 2021. That's going to do it, everybody. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast as my voice continues to struggle with me. I think we're on the way up. I'll keep drinking, honey. We'll see what happens. Thank you, as always, for listening. I'll work on this. Until next time, take care, everybody. 